Okay, so today we're looking at Sir Wayne Jewett's uh, problem number 41 in chapter 8. And in this problem, we are looking at a loaded ore cart that's being pulled up an incline by a winch. So obviously the first thing we want to do is draw a diagram to help us conceptualize the problem. And we know that the angle here, theta, is 30 degrees. And we know that the, or the problem tells us that the, that the ore cart starts at rest and then the velocity increases it accelerates uniformly so the velocity increases linearly as a function of time until 12 seconds at which point the cart moves at constant velocity from there on out so drawing a, a graph of velocity versus time can help us to visualize that right and we know that this velocity here is at 2.2 uh, meters per second. So we'll label the distance that the car travels up the incline as x, right, because uh, then the v is, is dx dt, right, this, that's the speed of the car up the incline, and that means the height of the, the car at any given time is going to be x sine theta, right, the height's going to be useful when we talk about the potential energy. Now the car, the problem asks us about the power. Part a says what power must the the winch mode to provide when the car is moving at a constant speed. Part B is going to ask what power the winch, what's the maximum power it must provide. And then part B talks, part C talks about total energy. Um, so we know this isn't going to be a conservation of energy problem because the, because the ore cart is continuously having energy pumped into it by the, um, by the motor, by the winch. Um, and our task is to find out the rate at which the winch pumps energy into the into the ore cart. Uh, luckily, we know how to do that because we know that the power, really the definition of power, is the cha rate of change of energy. So d e d t. How much? How many joules per second is this? Is the winch uh, giving to the to the ore cart? Uh, so we can find that. We'll, we can take the derivative. We just need to know the energy of the ore cart at any given time. So let's try. Let's try to find that. We know that the energy of the of the cart is going to be given by its uh, by its gravitational potential energy, plus its kinetic energy. And of course, the gravitational potential energy is just mgh, which in this case is mgx sine theta. Uh, and the kinetic energy, of course. 1 half mv squared. Now, um, that's our energy. So to find our power, we just need to take the time derivative of the energy. Now, the time variable doesn't appear explicitly anywhere in our equation for energy, uh, but neither is everything constant. We have two, two variables that are functions of time, right? Our x is a function of time, so is our v. So that means we're going to have to use the chain rule from calculus which tells us that the time derivative of the energy is going to be the derivative of the energy with respect to x times the time sorry dx dt plus the derivative of the energy with respect to v uh, times dv dt so that's from the chain that's the chain rule so we'll take the derivative now whoops So the power is going to be, well, the derivative of the first term uh, with respect to x is mg sine theta, right? So that's our dE dx times dx dt, uh, plus the derivative of the second term, right, with respect to v, that's the, that's the variable in the second term, is just going to be mv, and then we have times dv dt. Uh, so now, of course, we can replace our dx dt with velocity and our dv dt with acceleration. And we have a nice expression for the power at any given time. All right, so power is going to be mgv sine theta plus mva. All right, now we can go ahead and use this expression to, to find the, speci the specific power, the specific powers that are asked for in the problem. Right, in part A, we want the, po the power when we're traveling at a constant velocity. So that's the power when the second term in our, that's the power when that second term is zero, so when the acceleration is zero. 
And we know that at, at that time, our, our velocity is our final velocity of 2.2 meters per second. Well, that we can plug in numbers right away for that. It's just going to be the first term in our power equation, equation mgv sine theta. So 950 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times 2.2 meters per second times the sine of 30 degrees comes out to be 10.2 kilowatts. So 10.2 kilowatts is the amount of power that the winch has to provide just to just to uh, lift the the ore cart at that constant velocity uh, versus gravity. Part B then asks us to find the maximum power the winch has to provide. And the maximum power is going to occur when the second term in our power equation, MVA, uh, is not zero when the when the car is accelerating. And it's also going to occur when the velocity is at its maximum to maximize both terms there. Uh, so the max power occurs here right before the acceleration drops to zero, 12 seconds in. So the maximum power is when V equals 2.2 meters per second and A equals, well, we have to calculate that. It's the, it's the change in velocity versus the change in, versus how long it takes uh, to, to attain that velocity. Uh, so that's 2.2 meters per second divided by 12 seconds which comes out to 0.183 meters per second squared. So that gives us, um, so that occurs just before the acceleration drops to zero, and we plug in, the first term is still the same, we get our same 10.2 kilowatts for the, for the MGV sine theta, but now we have to add another 950 kilograms times 2.2 meters per second, uh, times the acceleration this time, which is the 0.183 meters per second squared. And we get a power then of 10.6 kilowatts. All right, so only a little bit more power, right? That, that, that little bit difference, that ex different for, um, 400 watts is, is just to accelerate the car, um, right? To, to increase its kinetic energy. The 10.2 kilowatts goes to, to continually increase its potential energy. Uh, now, finally, we have part C. Part C asks, what's the total energy that's been transferred out of the motor by work by the time the car moves off the end of the track, which is of length uh, 1,250 meters? Well, this is where we use conservation of energy. We know the car started with zero energy, right? It was at rest at the bottom of the hill, and it finishes with some amount of, uh, of potential and kinetic energy that we can calculate, and that amount of energy has to be the uh, the amount of work that the winch has done on the car. So that's what we need to calculate. Basically our final kinetic energy plus our final gravitational potential energy, which is going to be uh, one half m v final squared plus m g x final sine theta. Right, that's the f that's uh, the final height, uh, which when done out comes out to be five. 0.82 million joules. Thanks for listening.